see the screen is doing what it's supposed to do. I'll keep an eye on it on this side here. I'll keep an eye on it on this side here. Good. We'll turn the volume up here to not get any echo <coughs> from the monitoring screen. And Do we have any active viewers yet? I'll go to the dashboard rather, take a look. Okay, let's wait a little for some more people to join. Okay, first viewer, so we're good to go. Um, yeah, there's no point in waiting um, for larger numbers of viewers generally with our niche operating system with um, niche niche gaming on it. Um, I just want to uh, point out that um, I'll try to upload this to YouTube afterwards. Um, the YouTube channel's name is THFR, like the Twitch account name, just without the W at the end. Um, and yeah, so we'll take a look today at how to run Slay the Spire. So this has been possible already back in December or January, I think. Um, then there was a Java update that introduced some bugs with pretty ugly sprite flickering. Uh, but um, there's a new Java update to um, version U202, which now allows it to uh, run like it did before, which is uh, overall pretty good. Um, the stream's going to have some limitations because of the fact that I'm streaming from the uh, same computer that I'm going to be playing on. So um, it seems that Java sometimes um, like takes a bunch of seconds uh, like freezes for a bunch of seconds until it continues, which is okay with a game like this, fortunately. It's not an action game, it's not in real time, um, it's essentially turn-based or card-based. Um, so, uh, yes, all this is now simpler and possible because um, I fork um, libgdx um, with the changes that make it um, run, allow it to run on OpenBSD. If you're interested in the details, um, I'll lower the size of this window um, and see that I can really show everything. Uh, so, um, okay, I guess this should be okay. So, um, a little more. Um, here, diff OpenBSD, in, so this is the web address of my CVS repository. This is uh, the diff that shows um, what has changed compared to um, upstream libgdx. Um, most of this is actually just the new build files for the native libraries for the JNI, um, as, it, as they call it in Java land. Um, here's the readme OpenBSD which has the OpenBSD specifics pointed out. And um, so here are the prerequisites. Um, we'll be using this, a script made by uh, 
So Len, one of the OpenBSD developers, who apparently also has a soft spot for roguelite uh, trading card games, um, you can just use the script and it's going to be quite uh, painless to set everything up. Um, the script itself is going to check for uh, the prerequisite packages. Um, here they're listed. Um, here's a couple of packages that you're going to need. Um, OpenAL, LW, JGL, uh, because those are um, native libraries that um, the game connects to or libgdx connects to. Um, uh, libgdx itself uh, is going to be built with OpenBSD modifications and added into the game. JDK, of course, for uh, the Java um, runtime. And tools, Maven, which is going to let us um, build um, the modules that we need from libgdx, um, and it's going to allow us to build uh, the Apache and it's going to allow us to build the JNI libraries um, because the build system is set up as XML files for and an rsync in order to um, uh, put together the whole um, class tree that we'll need for the game. Okay, uh, and then you just go obtain the script from here. Um, first, uh, you'll need to get the game, so it's currently, you can currently only get it on um, Steam or Humble Bundle, as far as I know. Um, so here it is, the release version 1.0. If you want it um, without the whole DRM and stuff, go to the GOG.com community wish list and um, go to games, search for play the spires, and then you can upload it here. Um, I've already uploaded, so it doesn't let me anymore, but. Um, this way, maybe one day we can have a version that does not need you to have the Steam client somewhere to download the game. So now um, you'll need the Steam client somewhere, but fortunately you can use either the Windows or the Linux version. Um, I tested with the Linux version of the game, so then uh, uh, tested with the Windows version of the game. Since it's Java, it's all running as um, a managed code. Uh, uh, Java that just connects to some um, platform um, native libraries. Uh, this is all uh, uh, pretty painlessly possible and it's pretty portable. So, enough said. Um, let's uh, take the link here, um, highlight it, and then I'll show how we're going to set everything up. Um, so here we are, I have prepared this folder um, already with um, the file that you will need from the game. So the game right now lives uh, here. This is where um, the I copy the files from Steam, in this case the Linux version, but it doesn't really matter. All you need is the desktop dash 1.0 jar and we have it in here and everything else that we need right now, we can download this way uh, to get the uh, Solent script. And it's here, and we can just run it with sh. And it, it's going to take a while, a couple of minutes. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what it does. So um, right now it's creating a subdirectory and um, extracting um, the uh, Java archive. Now um, it is getting um, libgdx, the the OpenBSD modified version of libgdx. Uh, this is going to take a while because the download is, um, I think, 88 megabytes uh, as a compressed file. So um, yeah, uh, in the meantime. Um, I think I can just talk a little bit about what to expect and not to expect. So the game, it runs, it's um, absolutely 
um, playable and enjoyable. There is um, a minor, there's a couple of minor things like control support doesn't work, at least at this point. Um, maybe we can figure this out in the future. Um, then there is still some very light flickering. You can see it with some of the little like dust in the background that's rendered there, as well as the um, status icons under the characters. Um, they look just a tiny bit different, a tiny bit um, slightly flickering, but to an extent that's really mild and doesn't really affect uh, the enjoyment of the game, uh, in my opinion. Um, that said, um, I recommend that you make sure you have a, a version of um, Java that is either this one or the one two before this one. The last one, I think it was version dot one nine zero or dot one nine two. I forgot. The one before this one has a serious bug that leads to a pretty significant sprite flickering that um, limits the enjoyment of the game definitely. So um, this one here should be in packages now, this version 202. Um, or um, if you're running um, release, 6.4 release of OpenBSD, uh, you might also have a version that can be used. Um, not sure which one that was, but the previous one that I tried uh, first in December also worked fine. It's just the last one before this one that, that didn't work. So if you're on current, make sure you're on version 202. I had to build it from ports because it was not on packages yet. Um, we're still downloading. What else to expect? So um, uh, I'm doing a screen recording here with a microphone from the same PC. I don't have a separate computer um, for this. And um, because of that, it seems that this leads Java to temporarily lock up at times for a couple of seconds, and then it just goes on. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how this is related. This does not happen if you just run the game uh, without streaming it. Um, and um, so uh, I'll keep mentioning when it co uh, comes up because um, if someone uh, joins the stream later or like watches the video and fast forwards and then sees, oh my god, it's locked up for several seconds, I'm, I just want to make sure people understand that this is just a result of um, actually uh, streaming. Um, uh, since we have a couple more minutes, about three more minutes, um, why don't I endorse um, the stream? script itself. Uh, this is the script that I'm using to stream. I just updated it. Now it, uh, if you want to use it with a microphone, you'll need um, um, FFmpeg 4.1, but um, I've rewritten it largely. It's still a work in progress, uh, but um, this one allows me to uh, do overall, like to do all my streams on OpenBSD. Um, and yeah, here, if you don't want to use the land script, what the script does essentially is listed here as a step-by-step, -step. um, essentially it extracts the Java archive, it copies the native, uh, the libraries from ports, uh, OpenAL, LWJGL into the games directory, then, um, it, um, gets the libgdx openbsd, not with the CVS checkout, but as a compressed file in this case. Um, then the native uh, JNI libraries or native interface libraries are built. Um, uh, and that uses AND, and then these are copied into the game's directory, which is an unpacked Java archive. Um, then the Maven is used to build um, these different um, parts of the whole GDX uh, class tree, and then rsync puts all of them together. Um, 
and uh, replaces the um, replaces the existing tree, which is in um, bad logic, which is the name of the uh, I guess company or project that hosts libgdx, and replaces it with the one that you just created. Um, that has the OpenBSD specific entries. Um, we hope to upstream um, the changes um, or the adjustments that are necessary so that hopefully in the future libgdx games can run on OpenBSD with the um, upstream version. In the end, um, Java is run um, this year may need, depending on your Java path, uh, a different um, uh, invocation because uh, by default Java is not in the path. This is something that I adjusted locally, but uh, this here is the main class of the game. And let's see where we are. 92%. Um, yeah, uh, Slave Aspire itself uh, was just released in January 2019. Um, it's a roguelite game, a roguelite card game that received a lot of praise. Um, I'm not sure if someone cares about this, you can look up the Metacritic score, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty high. I've only heard positive result, uh, reports on it. It's just the combination of uh, a card game where you collect cards as you go and the um, randomization that comes with the roguelite um, uh, approach, uh, they go really well together in this game, and it looks nice. The art style takes a little getting used to, but it's, it feels responsive, and you see the effect that your cards do, and the music is great, sound effects are great. Um, you can see here, uh, right now, it's building the JNI libraries um, for a Java native interface, and now we're uh, in the part where Maven creates the Java class files and the class tree that's then going to be put together to um, uh, build a, a replacement class tree for the game that trips with um, upstream libgdx that does not take OpenBSD into account, unfortunately. Um, we should be done soon with this. And yeah, here we are. Uh, so you see here, rsync um, copied everything over, and um, here are the instructions at the bottom. Um, so if you list the directory, you see here's now a, a subdirectory. This may actually not be needed. Maybe future versions of the script can just like if you just have desktop the jar in here, there's not really a point in making a separate um, directory. Uh, but that's the way it is for now, and it still works, so this is a little bit based on what I did previously. Um, here's a whole bunch of stuff, but um, as it showed you before, here's the way that you can invoke uh, Java to run the game. So let's do this. Uh, wait, that did not work. Added a line break here that I didn't intend to. Okay. Okay. As I said, the game may at times hang for a few seconds with it, which is an artifact of the the streaming. Right now, it's just creating the window and it's takes a while until everything's ready. Um, this is also something that takes longer now that I'm streaming. So don't let this confuse you. It has worked quite reliably today. Oh, another thing um, that you may want to know is that um, sometimes Java fails to load the OpenAL library when you try to start the game. Um, and then uh, usually you can just restart it. You just look at the, the error message from Java. Okay, so here we go. Here's the game. Yeah, as I said, it takes longer because of um, 
uh, me streaming at the same time. And this is one situation where it kind of temporarily locks up because of the stream. Um, I'll keep mentioning this if it happens again because this is only uh, a result of me streaming at the same time. Um, if you don't stream while playing this game, at least on my system, I have no such problems. Sometimes switching focus seems to help. Um, oh, it gets better. So, don't let this fool you. If you don't stream while running this game, you're not going to have these wait periods. Okay, here you... This is the first time you started. You can get these slots and you can do your name. It saves everything in the game folder. Um, so, no cloud saves. And the saves are also not in a subdirectory of um, like a dot directory in your home directory, so it's just where the game is, so um, that's why I had to create a new profile too. It should be continuing any moment. Again, this is a result of me streaming at the same time. Unfortunately, um, doing it on the same computer uh, seems to affect the, seems to put Java into a state at times where it takes a uh, longer time to resume, so it will eventually experience. Come on. This is one of the longer periods for Java to get its act together. Here we go. Okay. Um, yeah. This is the main title screen. Here are settings. You can play with these. Um, not sure if everything works. As I said, the controllers, for example, don't work. Don't expect to play it with a gamepad, but it plays fine with a mouse and keyboard. So, we'll embark on the first quest. Um, Things are locked now because this is a new profile, and only the first character is available now. You need to, I think, at least defeat the first boss to unlock the other ones, so let's do this. This is the Ironclad, and yeah, this looks like Java is taking another moment to get his act together to continue from here. Again, and I'll keep repeating that for people who join the stream later or who like fast forward on YouTube later on, these freezes, these pauses that you're seeing here now, they're a result of me streaming at the same time, which seems to mess up the performance or the, which seems to put the Java virtual machine into a locked state at times. So. We're just waiting for it to get its act together and continue. And you will not have this kind of problem if you just play it on your system without streaming it. I still think it's uh, valuable to show that all of this works, and I hope people are not going to be deterred, and like falsely deterred by the impression that this game is locked up, because if you're not streaming, it does not, and it actually runs quite nicely. There used to be an issue with um, the background music um, not playing, uh, stopping to play at some point. I have not observed that since the Java was updated to the version uh, that ends in 202. But there is still um, 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 error in with OpenAL where it can't free a buffer or something. So this could still come up, but it is not like it was before. So here's the tutorial. Um, we'll skip over that. Um, you can, if you play it, you can read it yourself. And here we 
get our card, so actually this is me, this is the ironclad in this case. Here's my energy, very important. Here's the enemy. And um, one of the things that um, um, they say is one of the like key design elements is that the enemies, they advertise their next move. So this one will attack for 11 damage, so it means that I should adjust my decisions and strategy uh, to respond to this, as well as to anticipate what may happen in the future and in future battles. So there are several layers to all of this, even though the cards are relatively simple. Um, I mean, these here are the basic cards, but um, um, the explanations on are relatively simple. They are overall easier than Magic the Gathering cards that have like a resource, different resource types here and then um, like um, different unit types. So here we have skills and attacks and there's a third class of cards that talk with powers. Here's artifacts. Um, everyone starts, every character starts out with one. This one here heals 6 HP at the end of combat. HP is here. Here's gold. Here you can put potions. Here's the map that we saw earlier. And here's my deck. All the cards that I own. Um, see, it's 5 strikes, 4 defense, and 1 bash. So, here's the settings. So, here's the draw pile. So, those that haven't been drawn yet. Here's the discard pile. Here's an exhaust pile. If you exhaust a card, you can't play it anymore. Um, uh, in this combat and whenever your draw pile has been exhausted um, the discard pile will be shuffled into the draw pile again um, or the discard pile will become the draw pile so this one wants to attack for 11 but defend so we can remember that we will heal 6 damage so I'm okay with taking 6 damage at this point in the hopes that I'll defeat him no, he wants to do 7 damage. What am I going to do? Um, bash uh, applies vulnerable and vulnerable here. You can see increases the uh, uh, amount of damage from attack. So um, this way, because it's too vulnerable, any attack played after this, as well as attacks played next turn, will be more effective. So I'm going to play this one. I'm happy to take another 2 damage in return. Here you see the sprite flickers a little, you also see it here. That is a slight bug, but it's not um, it's not very bothersome in my opinion. Here's more tutorial that explains what I er explained earlier, and I get a new set of cards. So this enemy now has five blocks, so if I deal damage, it's first gonna go to block. Only when block is gone, then I'm gonna deal more damage to it. But I want to maximize it now because the enemy is vulnerable, so we'll do use both strikes. You see, it goes up from 6 to 9 damage because the enemy is vulnerable. But it's only 4 because first it was taken away from the block. Another strike, and we could defend, we don't need to it because the enemy is not attacking. The enemy is actually going to defend next turn and use the buff, meaning it's gonna. Um, improve some of its stats, at least temporarily. Yep, you see the strength went up, so the attacks are going to be more damaging. So, you see, um, it's got 10 HP left, um, and 6 blocks, so if we can deal 16 damage this turn, then we can defeat it. We have Bash, which can deal 8 damage, and we have Strike, which can deal 6. And with 3 energy, we can only play um, one strike after one bash. You could either play three strikes, which deals 18 damage, or bash and another strike, which would deal 17 damage, because um, this would go up from 6 to 9. I'll just uh, use all three strikes now. First, it just removes the block, so we're down to 4 HP, and now the enemy is defeated. After every battle, you get spoiled uh, gold and um, a card. So, um, then you need to make the decision, which card do you want to uh, add, or do you want to skip? 
if you take too many cards, your deck's gonna be very diluted, and the really good cards are gonna be hard to encounter, and you will find them rarely. So that's sorry, the, the whole skill in um, building your deck, deck as you go. Um, so I lean towards taking Body Slam, which is gonna be useful early, and taking with the Iron Clap. Um, it's always interesting to go to the question marks because you could end up with a fight, you could end up with a special event, you could end up with a merchant there, so, and the special events sometimes have really good rewards. Um, Java decided to take a moment again to think, so let's give it a moment. Again, this is a result of me streaming while playing and the Java Virtual Machine doesn't seem to deal very well with this and sometimes just um, sits there for, I don't know, half a minute it seems, maybe, or even longer. Okay, here we go. So here you need to make a choice. Spray and gain 100 gold, you desecrate the shrine and you gain more gold, but you'll become cursed. Or you just leave. I'll just take 100 gold. Curses are negative cards that whenever you draw them, they have a negative effect on you. Okay, so this enemy, um, cultists, they increase their strength quickly over time, like with every turn. So the sooner you defeat them, the better, and that's where um, Bash is very useful. So hopefully next turn we can deal a lot of damage. Sometimes they say things like this. Okay, so he wants to deal six damage. I can outlock five of those. So 18 damage total. And I, sh I might be able to defeat him next turn. I'll play until the first boss if we make it that far, if I don't die before that, um, so that you get an idea of the game a little more. See if anything's happening on the chat. Uh, yeah, there is. Sorry, I'm just testing things. Okay, so now we have a more complex situation. He wants to deal nine damage. I prefer to only take 3 damage because then I can deal with max health. So, but for that I would need to use uh, 2 defense. So, um, um, however, if we do use 2 defense, I could use body slam afterwards, which would turn my block into damage. So, with 2 defense, I'll block all damage and deal 10 damage, so this is where the cards interact and uh, you can look for synergy between the cards. I only want to deal 12 damage, but I have Bash and I can just take him out. Okay, so we already have a Body Slam. Uh, twin Strike deals more damage than my current attack, works well with Strength, upgrades, but Anger is the best card probably because it doesn't cost anything and it um, clones itself whenever you use it. So, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm gonna uh, talk a little less and play a little more, um, but that's probably why you're watching it. Um, so, I think I'll just <coughs> this, this, and turn that up to damage to this one. I'll do a little bit less explaining and just like play and um, like play a little bit quicker. Before. Okay, here we have anger and it deals six damage, like with a strike, but it only cost it doesn't cost any energy, and you add a copy of it to your discard pile. So after playing it once, you'll have two of them. So let's do this, and you see here another one appeared and goes to the discard pile. And if you look at the discard pile, now we have two anger. Okay, 
I'm lecturing again. I realize that. There we go. It's a ton of fun this game once you start realizing the possible interaction synergies, the all the variations that you can do. We have a potion now, it can give us thorns, which here tells you if someone attacks me, they receive damage back. Another card. All cards are explained here. Corruption can be very powerful in the right context, but it means like uh, the skills, they cost no energy anymore, but they also are removed from you. So if you it's easy to use up all your defense if you play it uh, like let's take please because that has area of effect um, and it's going to be at a campfire so here we have three enemies now this would be perfect for please um if they gain temporary block um after you hit them so prevent most of the damage and this one here is the best one to hit because it gets all its luck now and then it's gone. They only do this one. Now they weaken me. Leaf is very powerful against larger pieces anyway. So Can we kill one of them? We can deal 4 damage and 4 8. It's not enough for anything. We will definitely defend. And then we'll just town with these. We'll take 7 damage. Which is okay. It's still in an okay range. Clash is a difficult card to do as well. Um, let's take Clash. It might work with this deck. So here we have a rest spot, which as you can see now is for resting or smithing. Since we're very high with HP, I'm gonna smith and I'm gonna improve one card. So the main ones would be this one, this one, or this one. Um, anger just has this multiplier. Clash is difficult to work with, and it may not be, because it can only be played if you have nothing but attacks in your hand. So let's go for anger. And if we get another chance, then we can bash. And there's another card shut up that we prefer. Um, here's an elite enemy, so I'll go there and show you how it's to fight in this. This slime here has a special ability, just hover over it and you'll see that it splits when its HP is at or below 50%, so we have angle plus now. Um, and it's not attacking, so we'll just like do all the damage we can. This, and then we'll see block and I uh, just turn those blocks into damage as well. So here we also have another portion potion. Okay. Here we have clash, lots of damage, but it can only be played if I only have attacks to man. So I'll play the one defend, even though the enemy's not attacking because this one here is just so good. It yeah, doesn't even use any energy. And no. Got it down to 29. It's gonna split. That's why it's got the question mark still there. Uh, I think we're gonna do 10 damage. 
I'm gonna luck that and make one of them vulnerable. Now they want to attack for 17 damage. We have Clash again, so that's an attempt to actually use our block. So we, we can actually play all the cards because we have some energy. We have two of our cards are zero energy cards, so let's do that. So block 10. Let's see what else we can accomplish. Can we defeat this one? It looks pretty good. Okay, and now let's do some more damage to this one. We get another anger card. The number of anger cards goes back to one. Um, after the end of the fight. Uh, okay. More opportunity to do damage and we move on to another fight. These are relatively easy, so... We have Cleave already. Combust is a power that can be very easy, so let's get this. Let's go to fight the Elite. Here's a little event. Try to find it in your chance. Once you're showing up, this is actually an elite, so I have to fight this one. This one has to uh, apply a negative effect on me. Let's just go all nuts on this one. This one can deal a lot of damage. We might end up using a potion in this fight. See, it decreased my strength and my dexterity. Dexterity means um, that's block from card. Now 18 damage, see that's a lot more than we had previously. And that's why I want to weaken it. Also only 13, but it's better. Again, um, so my thinking here now is if we use the power card and this weapon, then I can still play Clash, so um, that's a good enough reason for me. And Combust is going to be very useful. It's going to take 1 HP to deal 5 damage. Now we can play Clash. Better than playing um, body slam. Okay. Uh, let's play another defensive. We can play Clash. We got all our cards played this turn. Okay, it's going relatively well. Only got 20. Damage. Can I slow down this turn? No, I can't. Okay. Definitely anger. Definitely. Still one to ten. Question is the second turn or the strike? Say second turn. Dead next turn. But now I took 12 damage, down to 49. Still doing okay. Okay, and the gambling chip. The relic. Here, oh, here's some good cards. I lean towards whirlwind. Shrug it off. Need more defense. Nah. 
This is a difficult choice. Let's pick this one. Get the chest, and we'll get a gremlin or another relic. When an enemy dies, you gain one energy and draw one card. Useful if there's a lot of weaker, several weaker enemies. This is our weak fight now. So, we want combust. Do we want bash now? Cleave is very useful. Like bash, not necessarily. And with these ones, we want to be quick because they put a lot of junk in my deck. We have no defense this time. I doubt that we can take one of them out. Oh, well, close. But no cigar. Oh, no, we did. I didn't take into account that we had um, But And now we have an additional energy point from the gremlin one. Okay, so days I cannot play. Disappear at the end of the round because it's ethereal, but that means I can't play Clash unless I had a way to exhaust things, which I don't have in my hand here right now. So, definitely play Clash. It's a very good card. Then maybe we'll just block all the damage. Okay, not bad. Doing okay. I can kill the one that's trying to damage me, and that's what I'll do. I'm using blocking, using body slam, and using strike. And I even get another card thanks to Gremlin Horn. And I even use also that. Okay, and for another relic. Another proportion. Difficult choice at least. I'll go for Iron Wave. Should I rest or there's one more rest coming up here right before the boss? Let's rest. Which will increase our chance of actually meeting the boss. Against combust because maybe I can get around the damage. Let's play. Okay, so anger. Well, so this one and then the other one. Damage is gonna go up because I'm vulnerable. But I have clash now, so I can defend, defend, use clash to a lot of damage, and it's gonna strike. I'll 
And here we have a chance of finding a relic. Oh, the chance gets better as the damage gets higher. Okay, so we found it. I think we want to move back. not attacking so I'm moving all of these things. Let's see if I can get more attack for <sighs> and then he takes damage at the end of the turn, which decreases every turn. Okay, all of them are attacks anyway, so I'll just use Clash. All the cards I really want to play because it's, it's a random card that's been con. Not strike is gone, but that's some damage in the turn now so if he has his heart tied. Person anger might be useful to see what he has to do here. Is the microphone not working at the ship? I may have talked a little quiet, or I, maybe I should have um, increased the gain. So, if my voice was a little quiet, um, that's because of the settings that I set for the stream. I should have calibrated it. Calibrated them better. Uh, I can, however, maybe increase it a little. Um, okay, might be a little better now. I don't know. We'll just finish the boss here and. Um, We'll live with the results. Okay, maybe it's sounding better now. I don't know. I just cranked the gain up in BST um, all the way. 
because uh, that way I don't have to restart the stream. Okay, if we deal 10 damage then he has to uh, like change his status again, so that's what we'll do. Defeat this one, go to the next act. Oh, my HP is low, I didn't even realize. Uh, if we can defeat him. So, I'm not gonna try not to take a lot of damage. I might, I might die. My defense isn't very good. So, I'll live now, but I won't live for much longer. Yeah, only 5 HP left. And he gets 20 damage, so I have to put everything in defense. I can't anger, I can still play. But it still won't be enough. And I'm dead. Okay. Oh well. Here you gain points, and then you can unlock new cards or artifacts and new character. The silent. Go to the main menu. Okay, so um, you've seen, like, if you go back to the beginning of the stream, if you've um, started watching later, uh, it's really easy to install uh, with the script and with um, the patched libgdx. So the main barrier being that you need to obtain it via Steam, so you need to have a Windows or Mac. Mac might also work, or Linux, um, somewhere with Steam and get it from there, and then you can get the the script from here, which does basically everything for you. It even tells you if some of the packages are missing. So. Yeah, well, thanks for watching, and bye-bye.